Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to another episode of Spitting Venom, aka the Venom Vlog. And on today's episode, we're actually going to look at a comic book called Spirits of Venom. It's like a four-issue crossover between uh, the Spirits of Vengeance comic book that came out in the 90s and Web of Spider-Man. And it's Venom interacting with Johnny Blaze, the original Ghost Rider, and Dan Ketch, who at this point was the new Ghost Rider and definitely my favorite Ghost Rider. Uh, but we will uh, talk about that here in a second. First, I want to do a little intro and giveaway. I got uh, Venom Comics today, Venom Poison X number three. Uh, I, I got here with the newest issue of uh, Venom number 162. I also picked up Amazing Spider-Man 796 to continue the Carnage, uh, you know, uh, Norman Osborn storyline. Uh, so that's the final issue of the setup here. And the next issue will be called Go Down Swinging. And that'll introduce us to, you know, the new Goblin, the Red Goblin, and uh, Spider-Man fighting him. And of course, I did pick up uh, Doctor Strange Damnation. This is by Donny Cates. He's going to be the upcoming writer of... Um, of uh, Venom coming up in May. So I've been loving his Thanos stuff. I wanted to check out Damnation. It's basically Doctor Strange in Las Vegas fighting Mephisto, the devil, and uh, and you have the new Midnight Suns being formed. And when I was uh, a big fan of Ghost Rider in the 90s, uh, which was, uh, you know, with Dan Ketch and stuff like that uh, in the Spirits of Vengeance crossover, we'll talk about Spirits of Venom. Um, uh, John, uh, Danny Ketch, he was he formed together a group of the Midnight Suns, the first group. And it was like Blade and, and uh, Morbius and all these other characters. And it was really really awesome uh, so the new Midnight Suns have Scarlet Spider on the team so we'll definitely talk about that as we branch off into Scarlet Spider territory which we will be doing soon I thought I would have it done by the end of this month we would introduce Scarlet Spider on this show but it looks like it's gonna be a couple more weeks before I get to that story but don't worry it's coming up very very soon uh, but yeah so I want to give away uh, one of these issues why don't we give away the Venom one obviously the other codes I'll save for another video but for now let's give out the Venom code boom right there First person into that code gets it, and uh, and and you'll get to enjoy Poison X Part Three, where the X Men, uh, the younger versions of the X Men, actually get their own symbiotes and team up with Venom and are on a space adventure together. Uh, so yeah, the X Men pretty much kidnap Venom and uh, and are taking him around to fight this big battle for them uh, or with them. So uh, yeah, in the first pages you'll see Cyclops actually get the symbiote over his face. Uh, check that out. Yeah, pretty cool. Uh, so yeah, and then I won't tell you any spoilers about where how the symbiote uh, utilizes Scott Summers' powers. It's pretty neat, uh, and it's able to redirect the beams to come out of other areas. Uh, so yeah, so anyway, first person put that code in gets it. And uh, without further ado, let's jump right into Spirits of Vengeance and Spirits of Venom and Web of Spider-Man. Let's jump right into that crossover and discuss it. So here we are with Spirits of Venom. So this is a four-issue series, as I said in the intro, that crossed over the Web of Spider-Man book starting with issue 95. Then it went into Spirits of Vengeance, which you can see Ven Venom cleverly crossed out Vengeance and put Venom's name in there, uh, in issue number five of Spirits of Vengeance. Uh, then into 96 of Web of Spider-Man, and then into issue six of Spirits of Vengeance, which has a cool cover. Uh, there by Adam Kubert. And so, yeah, this was written by Howard Mackey, who's a writer I'm a big fan of. He did a lot of cool stuff in the 90s. My favorite thing that he did was create the Dan Ketch Ghost Rider. Uh, that is easily my favorite version of Ghost Rider, although I love all the other versions as well. Maybe minus Johnny Blaze. Never really liked Johnny Blaze too much. I do like him in these series, though, where he's human and he's running around with a gun and he's trying to assist the Ghost Rider and trying to teach him and he's more of like a mentor type uh, and kind of a like a buddy cop story with them. Uh, but he's also the one who's trying to keep Dan Ketch from being Com going completely uh, into what the demon wants, uh, and so uh, so yeah, so he's kind of like the, the the balance to uh, to the Ghost Rider because Dan Ketch obviously he's a different kind of Ghost Rider. He didn't get his uh, powers the same way that Johnny Blaze did. Uh, it was under different circumstances. He didn't make a deal with the devil or anything like that. It was completely different. Uh, so you know Johnny Blaze has some answers for him, but not all. So Johnny Blaze is also hanging out with him to learn as well, to learn from him and see what you know is going on with him what makes him different of a Ghost Rider than what he was. Uh, and in this book, uh, it picks up pretty much right after the events of Web of Spider-Man 94, where Spider-Man has captured uh, the Hobgoblin. And the Hobgoblin uh, puts someone in critical condition. And basically, Spider-Man's webbing the Hobgoblin across the city because he's like, look, I'm not going to leave you here for the cops to take you. I'm going to take you in myself. I want to make sure you get caught this time. I want to make sure they unmask you. I want to make sure all this stuff because he's had horrible luck with hobgoblins and who the real hobgoblin was back in the first hobgoblin appeared um, and it cost him life of a, a potential ally and friend so he's just like i don't want to make any more mistakes i don't want anyone to make any mistakes i'm going to bring you in you know by myself so as he's you know swinging him to the police department 
uh, ready to turn him in, he uh, he actually has a tail. There is uh, the doppelganger, the alien creature Spider-Man with the teeth from uh, you know Maximum Carnage, uh, and the Demo Goblin who hasn't turned good yet. This is the part in the comics where he hasn't you know done something to save an innocent life yet. He is uh, he is out there trying to eat sinners, and he wants to eat. Uh, Mackendale, uh, he, who is the current hobgoblin in the story, um, and he wants to eat him because he's because he came from him. He's like all of his evilness, and like they kind of split. They were like the demogoblin spirit or demon or whatever was inside hobgoblin, and they were split. And so now the demogoblin and the doppelganger are chasing down after Spider-Man, trying to get their hands on the hobgoblin. Uh, and so as they're doing that, Spider-Man's heading his way. Meanwhile, down in the sewers. You have uh, Johnny Blaze and Ghost Rider who have been tracking this uh, the body of Death Watch, and Death Watch is this enemy of the Ghost Riders, and Ghost Rider doesn't want him to get you know his power back and gain his power back, so he's looking for him. Uh, but there's also been murders going on around New York, and so it's kind of drawn the attention of Ghost Rider and Johnny Blaze. So they head down into the sewers looking for what might be causing these murders, and they understand that there's some shadow creatures that could be behind it who have spawned out of Death Watch. So when Death Watch, the, the man, like kind of you know decomposed and died, all these shadow creatures came out of him. And their plan is to go back into him and be reabsorbed so they can become the all-powerful Death Watch again. So... You know, obviously Ghost Rider is trying to prevent that from happening, but he also wants to capture all these uh, shadows and destroy them as many as he can so that if they do return to Death Watch, he won't be as powerful. Uh, so they're down in the sewers, and while they're down there, they run across Venom, who is also on his own investigating the murders that have been happening because this is before he went to San Francisco. This is kind of earlier on, so we're a little bit out of order here, but this kind of happens uh, right after... Uh, Carnage first appeared actually so he mentions in this that you know Spider-Man betrayed him during the Carnage incident and that he's got out now and he's trying to find out who these uh, who's murdering innocent people but also if he sees Spider-Man he wants to kill him so uh, these two uh, sets of characters are on different pads and of course their pads cross in this issue in the first one uh, Web of Spider-Man number 95 and uh, in this one Spider-Man is trying to save protect a priest who gets caught up in all this um, and he's also trying to keep uh, Mackendale off of you know from being killed by the demon goblin so he's like all right I got to protect the bad guy now who's webbed up and not going anywhere but now this priest is involved and the demo goblin doesn't want to hurt the priest he's like hey the priest isn't innocent but uh, I'm the demo goblin I have to kill and absorb and destroy uh, Mackendale I need the hobgoblin and spider-man just won't give him so then the demo goblin's like all right well then I might have to hurt this priest if you don't, you know, uh, if you don't follow what I need. If you don't give me what I need, I might have to do something that I don't want to do. So Spider-Man is like it, torn between that decision and their battle leads them under the church into the sewers. And pretty much the rest of the book takes place in the sewer. They come out briefly here and there, like come up for air every now and again, but then they get sucked right back down in or, or Spider-Man has to jump down in because the priest got pulled under. And it's, you know, everything just keeps leading them back to the sewer. So it's four issues taking place pretty much in the sewer of New York and, uh, and you know, Dan Ketch never turns back into Dan Ketch. He's Ghost Rider the entire time. Uh, so, and he's basically there to uh, keep, he's trying to prevent Death Watch from reforming. Uh, so he's killing shadow creatures, grabbing them, and doing his penance stare. If you don't know penance stare, uh, it is this cool power the Ghost Rider has where he looks into your eyes and all your sins just come right to the forefront and just cloud your whole body and your mind. And you are just catatonic if not dead sometimes you just die um and so uh so it it has a different effect on a lot of different people and uh, and so ghost rider uses it on these shadow creatures to evaporate them and he's like all right we're killing some of these things so if they do merge and death watch at least he won't be all powerful maybe we can still take him down in case we fail because he has he has his hands full ghost rider has his hands full he also has to prevent venom from constantly eating Spider-Man. Every time they're all in the room together, Venom just turns and sees Spider-Man and goes, all right, everyone, out of the way. I'm going to eat Spider-Man. And, you know, Ghost Rider will have to chain him and pull him back. And there's this little level of fear with Ghost Rider at first and and, and Venom. Like, they they fear each other on a some level. But uh, also, Ghost Rider being a kind of a fearless creature is just acting. Like, all right, I'm going to chain him up. I'm going to chain him up. And Venom keeps saying, like, all right, like... I'm, I'm not going to do anything to you right now, but if you keep doing that, uh, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to lose my crap. And basically Ghost Rider is like, look, focus. Like you want to protect innocence. Yeah, you hate Spider-Man. Deal with that later when all this madness is done. But there are innocent people down here in the sewers that are being fed to these shadow monsters. We need to get them out. So you need to jump on that, get them out of here, 
and uh, and and forget about Spider-Man for two seconds. So every time he tries to you know speak calm, to, to calm down, every time Ghost Rider, a guy with a flaming skull head, is trying to calm down an alien creature emerged with a human being, that's what we're talking about here. Uh, it, it works temporarily, and then, of course, Venom, like an Alzheimer's patient, just sees Spider-Man again. It's like, feed, feed, brains, brains. Um, and then anytime anyone tries to kill Spider-Man, he's like, no. And he stops them, and he's like, I'm, I'm here to kill Spider-Man. And uh, you guys back away. And there's, like, these, like, two random thugs that are, like, you know, trying to re bring back Death Watch, and they're kind of behind it all and stuff, and, and they're kind of forgettable. Actually, I can't remember their names. Uh, but uh, so Venom is dealing with them. Ghost Rider's fighting them, and uh, Spider-Man's trying to keep the priest alive, and he's trying to keep uh, Hobgoblin alive. Hobgoblin gets taken by the Demo Goblin, chained up, and the Demo Goblin is slowly peeling his sins off him, trying to peel his layers back, and he's getting ready to kill him. Uh, and then Spider-Man ends up finding him, and they get into a battle again. So once again, Spider-Man having to save his enemies after getting the priest and, and uh, the others to safety, like Venom and, and Ghost Rider and Johnny Blaze, they all got all the people out. So now it's just the powerhouses, all the heroes and villains down in the sewer, Death Watch, all the shadows come back into his body, Ghost Rider's been detained, he's been caught, Venom's been caught, Spider-Man's been caught, everyone's been caught, uh, and they're all chained up, and Death Watch is, you know, basically, all the shadows are coming back into him, they're forming a ritual, and they're like, no, we can't let this happen, we can't let this happen, so Johnny Blaze luckily breaks out, then breaks the Ghost Rider out, helps Spider-Man and the priest and everyone get out, they all leave, you know, the, the few uh, survivors that they, the villains pulled back in the sewers, now they're finally all gone. Spider-Man saw to it. He That's his role in the story is he, he gets everyone out. Uh, and Johnny Blaze turns and looks at Venom and he's like, all right, he's a bad guy, but we need him. So I'm going to shoot out his chains and let him loose on Death Watch and all these other bad guys to help us out. Uh, and of course he does that and uh, Death Watch, you know, is fighting, fighting everybody, beating everyone up. Uh, the two goons that he has, they're fighting everybody. And there's even a great sequence in the beginning of the fourth issue where Ghost Rider is fighting Venom. And the two of them go at it and Ghost Rider is like, look, we're, we're going to stop the bad guys. We're going to do all this, but you, you need to calm yourself or else. And then Venom's like, or else what? I'm tired of this. You're stopping me from eating Spider-Man. We'll kill the other bad guys, but I have to kill Spider-Man too. And Ghost Rider's like, no, he's an innocent. So he grabs uh, Venom and he goes, I, I try to teach you, but you won't learn. So he looks into his eyes, does the penance there, and the symbiote eyes are not affected by it. They burn, but not because there's fire, because Ghost Rider's fire doesn't exactly burn like real fire does. It's more of a spiritual fire. But there is something happening to Venom and the symbiote, but it is not what the penance there is supposed to do to you. So the penance there actually reflects back on Ghost Rider, and there's a big blast. So you actually learn something new about Venom's powers. He's invulnerable to the penance there, which is crazy. He still got hurt a little bit, but Ghost Rider got hurt way worse. The backlash hurt him more. The the spirit of Zarathos the demon and whatever's inside Danny Ketch, it does not know what the symbiote is. It does not know how to connect with it or reflect its anger or sins at it. It doesn't know how to do it. And I thought that was a cool revelation that Howard Mackey did in this storyline. And uh, once Venom is, you know, free, he gets away or he starts to get away. But then Spider-Man is like, all right, dude, you wanted me. We're going to do this. And while they're fighting, you have uh, Ghost Rider and Johnny Blaze fighting Death Watch over here in the goons. They beat them, take them down, Venom and Spider-Man duke it out, and then right when Venom's like, all right, I'm outnumbered, it's it's Spider-Man now, Johnny Blaze, and Ghost Rider, and they're all coming to me because all the other bad guys are down, I'm going to get out of here. And Spider-Man's like, no, you're going to answer for the guardsmen that you killed, the guardsmen being like the jury members, the green Iron Man guys. Uh, there was one that Venom killed uh, in the vault, the vault storyline, and he's like, you're going to answer for this, this sin. And Venom's like, no, I'm not. And he's like, that kid was in my way, and I killed him. So, like, that's, you know, lesson learned. No, don't get in my way when I want to kill you, you know, Spider-Man. Like, so Ghost Rider, Johnny Blaze, learn from this. Do not get in my way. Next time I see Spider-Man, I'm going to kill him. And if I see you there, I'm going to kill you too. Uh, but before Venom can get away, the other guardsmen show up and hit him with a sonic blast and capture him and put him in a tube. Uh, so once again, Venom is captured. So yeah, heavy story. A lot happens in it. Very action-packed. Actually, this book is very, very action-packed. All four issues, boom, 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 boom. Just keep going. Uh, but I love the art. Adam Kubert did a great job. Uh, I, I think, I can't remember the artist on uh, Spirits of Venom. So I'll open this book real quick. I want to say it's... Milgram, but I don't think Al did this uh, one. Uh, no, it's uh, Saviuk uh, did the pencils on uh, on uh, the Web of Spider-Man books. But yeah, the art looks great uh, on both these books. And like I said, this was part of my favorite run of 90s comics, which was the 90s Ghost Rider run, uh, which of, I have every issue of. And uh, I 
talked about doing a series of it a while ago and end up doing Venom instead, but I may still do a couple Ghost Rider episodes later on uh, when we, you know, after the Venom movie comes out, I might, you know, kick up a Ghost Rider series for you guys because that run is fantastic. I really love that run. And we'll talk about the Midnight Suns and all these other cool things that happened. Uh, but for here, Venom's back in his cell. He's going to be transported back probably to Ravencroft or somewhere or under the, you know, the care of the vault people again. And uh, we'll learn more about his adventures. Although we already know how he gets out. We read Maximum Carnage, which is the next time you see him. Uh, so yeah, he already gets out. But, uh, but yeah, this was a fun storyline. Spirits of Venom. It's in a trade paperback, I think you can buy it right now. Um, I'll try to put the picture right here. It's a, a Ghost Rider Rise of the Midnight Suns trade paperback. I think they put these four issues in there. And it's going to be reprinted in another book coming out, which, which we'll talk about in the next episode, where I'm going to look at the May solicitations for Marvel Comics and what they have coming out in the month of May of 2018 that'll have Venom in them. And we'll talk about this uh, again because it's in one of the, the trade paperbacks coming out in May. So uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think of this down below. Have you read Spirits of Venom? Uh, if not, do you have any favorite parts of something I talked about? Do you have any questions, something I didn't go over or clarify? Let me know down below. And if you did read it, let me know your favorite moment. I really appreciate you guys watching the show. Thanks so much. Like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I'll see you in the future. Peace.